So without further ado, welcome to our brand new M4 CX. So we got the hood off of the car, so we actually have better lighting and actually removing everything. You guys can see what we're doing exactly. Uh, but this hood right over here, guys, looks absolutely gorgeous. If I can find another CS hood for this car, I think that's what we're gonna go ahead and do because look how beautiful that is. Look at that M right there. Just the attention to detail is just absolutely gorgeous. These hoods, brand new, run about ten to twelve thousand dollars, which is absolutely insane. So if we can obviously find a used one for a fraction of that price, we'll go with that. If not, we'll see what other options there are because obviously into a salvage title M4 CS, it's not really worth dumping ten to twelve thousand dollars on just a hood. Honestly, guys, if this section right over here was not completely missing, I probably would have took this hood down to some place to get it professionally repaired. But because it's completely shattered and it's missing absolutely everything, I don't think this hood is savable. But let me know down below, guys. Should we actually use this thing for wall art because it looks absolutely gorgeous? Gorgeous. And I feel like it would be such a shame to throw away a hood like this. Um, but yeah, anyways, the hood is off the car. At this point, we do have more access to the engine bay. And we do have actually more access that you see in this frame rail right over here. This frame rail doesn't look all that bad. Honestly, I think that can get pulled right into place. So that is, I think, kind of good news. Um, obviously, it's too soon to tell. We need to remove more things right over here. And then obviously, the main impact, honestly, it looked like it was in the driver's side just because of how everything kind of shifted. So I guess we'll find out. we we'll remove more things on that side. But so far... Not as bad as I thought it was. Because the title of this video, this car was a scam. We'll get into how this car was actually a scam and why um, we believed it was a scam and that's why no one really bid on this car and the price of this car and everything. Probably towards the end of this video, but for now, let's just go ahead and keep tearing it apart to see if it really is a scam. So after stripping a lot of stuff off the front of the M4 CS, um, it's honestly looking a lot better than I thought. First things first, the frame rail itself, uh, again, I still need to remove a few more things, um, but that just looks like it's a slight bend to the front, not buckled inwards. When it's a slight bend, that can get bent back, which would be pretty awesome. Again, I'm not too sure how bad that is. I need to check on my frame guy a couple blocks over, ask if he can come check this out for us. This side as well, if you guys see it, the bend starts right here and goes this way, but it's just a bend. So theoretically, if you bend it straight again, uh, hammer it out, make it perfect, that should actually come out good as well. So. Again, looking pretty good. It's not buckled inwards. It looks like the impact was from the side, shifted everything this way. It wasn't directly on, which also could have saved the engine because there's no subframe damage here. There's just subframe damage there and there. There's nothing right over here, which means the steering rack is good. It means the pulleys and everything were undamaged, which is honestly such a good sign. The oil lines right over here is messed up. You guys can see the oil line is destroyed right there and the other oil lines destroyed right there and the cooler is not even with the car. So one of the scary things about this car is that this car was not purchased from insurance. This car was purchased by a person that purchased it from insurance that had it for three months. And uh, this car was relisted dozens and dozens of times. And uh, that's actually one of the reasons why this car ended up being so cheap, which we'll get into the details of how much we got this thing exactly towards the end of the video. But yeah, we got this thing for such a killer deal. And it's mainly because everyone was too afraid of the damage that's on this car. After getting this car and thinking of parting it out, we decided, you know what, it might be worth fixing up as long as we can get this engine to turn over. And worst comes to worst, if it doesn't turn over, uh, what we can do is literally just get another M4 donor car, chop the front end of this car, chop the front end of the other car, move everything over, including the engine and transmission, and just literally have a 
fresh front end on this car. We did something similar just recently on my wife's channel on her 335 IS. The front frame needed to get re-welded, so we actually pulled the engine out, got the front frame redone, um, put the engine back in, put the whole front end back together, and it passed on the inspection. It was absolutely perfect, runs and drives amazingly. So we are pretty confident we could do the same job on this car for worst comes to worst. And let's just be honest, guys, how crazy would it be to get an M4 CS on the road? It is so crazy that it has the OEM OLED taillights on there, the beautiful carbon fiber spoiler, carbon fiber diffuser, the CS wheels, the CS interior. Again, all the CS parts that come with this car, it's pretty cool. And if I have some pictures on my phone, I'm gonna throw up some pictures of how this car was from auction before the guy bought it, the guy that bought it before me. I bought it from a guy, the guy that bought it from auction, did only a few things differently to this car before sending it back to the auction. The first thing was, he got the bumper kind of pushed back in place. The first photos of the bumper was kind of ripped off. This taillight was completely shattered and uh, it just looked really, really, really bad. And the front end of the car, honestly, nothing was touched. Not even these modules right over here was removed. He tried selling anything. He absolutely didn't remove absolutely anything. None of the CS components in the interior either. Typically a person that buys a car and completely regrets his purchase, um, what I've seen on Copart, they'll buy the car from auction, they'll take off all the things that have value, replace it with like, like cheaper things and send it right back into auction. The thing is that I was kind of lucky with this car is that this car was sold at my local Copart. So I had the opportunity to go check it out in person to see is the transmission missing? Because for those of you guys who don't know, Copart, there are scams like that where people basically, you have all the shift assembly there, but that's not connected straight to the transmission. So transmission can be missing and all that could be looking fine. So we're like, is the transmission missing? Um, is this taillight replaced with a cheaper taillight uh, to you know look like there was never a damage over here or whatever because this doesn't look too bad on photos and when this was pushed in it don't look too bad in photos and then also not to mention the full cs interior i looked at everything in the interior everything cs related i had a checklist everything cs related was still on this car so the guy that bought it didn't take anything off the car. And then I was thinking maybe he was just trying to doctor it up a little bit and send it back to auction. Uh, so, you know, he can make a little more money than what he paid for it. But if you guys look over here, this is an OEM OLED taillight that he ended up replacing on here with no damage. So if you guys can see this bend right over here, this taillight was completely shattered. Now it's replaced with an OEM OLED taillight. This taillight alone is like 1500 bucks new. I believe they're like 700 or $800 used. This is an OEM GTS taillight that makes that fancy effect. These are the OEM ones. The only on CS and GTS. So actually when I saw that in person, I'm like, wow, this guy actually bought it, tried saving it, and uh, unfortunately, I guess he just thought he was in over his head. The repairs were too much. He saw how bad the frame damage was and he just passed on and sent it back to auction. That's what I was hoping. There's a lot of my friends that were looking at this car as well. And they're like, no way. This thing has been playing through auction a million times. There's probably something majorly wrong with it. So I decided, you know what? Let's just go ahead and go underneath the car at the Copart yard and just check if the transmission, everything in the undercarriage of the car is still there. For example, like the cats, the transmission, stuff like that. It's worth checking. And to my surprise, everything on this car was just chilling there like nothing was even touched. So that's kind of crazy. Um, that's again, one of the reasons why we're thinking about rebuilding this car. I think for him, it was in over his head. He didn't want to screw over anyone. He tried repairing some of this stuff and unfortunately it just was way over budget. So he sent it right back to auction. No one was willing to bid on it because it looked like a scam, but people like us, we don't really care because end of the day, you know, if it doesn't work out, we'll part it out and it best comes to best. If it does work out, um, which what we're trying to do here, we'll be having a running and driving 2020 M4 CS that looks absolutely insane. So yeah, I didn't really tell him the price that we got this car. So did you, uh, did you mention the price or I, no, 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 I never mentioned the price. How much did you get it for bro? Like, uh, before fees, before fees. Um, I think we won the auction for 16, 16,000. 16, yeah. 16, not 60, yeah. 16,000 out the door ended up being what? Like 18,000, 18,000. Um, I don't remember 18, bro. It was roughly like it was like 17 something, round 18,000 um, for an M4 CS 2020. But this one does have a higher mileage. I think it was like 55,000 miles. Yeah, so the guy, the guy who had this car, he drove it. He drove it. <laughs> like I was shocked. I was like, it's a 2020 car and it's 53,000 miles. Like so. I've seen some E90s like with less miles. I was like, yeah. So, I mean, to be honest with you guys, uh, 54, 53,000 miles for an M4, it's not really that high, but for a 2020 CS, I think it's the highest mileage one we've actually seen. So uh, yeah, the guy actually drove it. He probably loved this he car. He had fun with it. He had fun with it. It totaled out, the insurance paid him out for it. The other guy bought it, it was in over his head. Um, the only thing that we're kind of afraid of right now, because everything else looks fixable, the only thing is this frame right now, do we have to pull the engine out to fix this frame? We'll find out here in a little bit. We're gonna try to take off some more things. Um, just get the frame uh, rails completely exposed to see whether or not these are fixable. And the second thing was, did the previous owner try to run, the guy that bought it from the insurance company, try to run this engine without oil? Because if he did, this engine's completely toast. Even though it wasn't hit, 
it could be toast. And that's probably one of the reasons he could have let it go for cheap. So we don't know yet if we scored on this M4CS just yet, um, but there's a possibility we could have scored. We'll have to find that out uh, hopefully in the next video when we actually get new oil lines, new oil cooler. That's what we're doing in today's video. We're just kind of diagnosing what parts we need to get this thing started. Um, but if we can get this bad boy started, it's going to be so sick. <laughs> So fingers crossed. Um, we also need to get to this build ASAP. It's been sitting in this shop for two months now. And uh, the battery in this car is a $1,000 battery. So we need to make sure we get some juice to it, get it running. Um, just make sure we need to figure out if we need to put this car in a trickle or something. We don't want to kill this battery. It would completely suck. So yeah, we'll get to that as well. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and start taking off some more things. We have all these pieces right over here that we need to take off. For example, these three bolts, it's completely bent. So we have to take off. We literally had to take off the wheel uh, to get to these bolts. And actually, the wheel came out fine, right? Oh, yeah. If you so so hopefully, I think just that right wheel that your, your side is on yeah. is bent. Um, so I don't know if there's like a repair thing. I've never seen it before. It might be repairable, this wheel. Worst comes to worst, we might just need one wheel, which would be pretty sick. Yeah, so we pull off that wheel. It looks good. Looks great. Um, <laughs> and maybe we just have to buy one rim, and that would be so nice. <laughs> It'd be so <laughs> sick. So uh, these are M4 CS specific, so we can't get a donor car that will have these wheels unless we get another CS. So that's probably one of those few things we'll end up buying just like the hood and then possibly get an M4 donor to get the rest of the parts for this front end because everything else is pretty much the same um, other than the headlights. We might need to get laser headlights. We'll see. Yeah, because I saw the difference between the regular and the, the Halo it's not halo. No, I think they're just called laser lights. There's, laser. So they all have halos. Yeah. And then there was one with like laser lights and then no laser. So I saw the laser lights and I was like, oh my, like it makes the, it makes the front end. It makes it look like a 2020. Yeah, so I'm still debating on it. The car originally came with the non-laser. So to put lasers on it, we're basically putting extra money to a salvage car that we don't really need to. That's what my brother explained to me. Yeah. Um, so it's just in a financial standpoint, because at the end of the day, we're going to love this car. You're actually going to keep this car for a while. You sold all your other cars, so you yeah. can enjoy this when I it's done. I want to enjoy this. I want to pay off my student debt, so we still got finances on mine. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see what we can do. Well, so, yeah. The goal is, obviously, for him to rebuild it, keep it, drive it, enjoy it, go on a cruises with us, with our M cars right over there as well, um, which will be pretty fun. I know you're trying to get that in and out run. Noor, I'm trying to just go to the gym with my M4CS. I'm trying to go to in and out we'll drive together. That's the goal. That's the goal, yeah. You see that smile, guys? Hopefully that smile stays once we figure out this engine runs. <laughs> Nope. So that's the thing with Copart finds. Right now we're happy, and uh, again, we could stay happy, but odds are most times on Copart, and the realistic reason why no one really bid on this car other than us is because this thing possibly is toast, and we just don't know what, you know, maybe they know, we don't know. Who knows? But we'll find out. We'll find out. Again, let's just go ahead and take apart more things. I'm going to start taking apart all this stuff up here so, again, we can expose that frame rail. My brother's going to continue removing everything on this side just so we can get everything out of the way. So as you guys can see, the frame rail on the passenger side honestly doesn't look too bad other than this front section that has a complete, I'd say, 90 degree bend at least. The caliper in the rotor does look fine, which is super, super, super good. The suspension all looks good in this side. The fender actually looks good as well. It's just that front tip is a little bit, but I'm sure we can get that stuff repaired if we don't find an exact paint match fender. Um, again passenger side just that little slight bend in the front nothing too crazy in the back now we come to the driver side we are noticing there's a few buckles here and there a few cracks in the back uh, we can't really further diagnose until we get this AC compressor out this AC compressor is damaged so figure to remove it anyways and then we can further diagnose that frame rail As you guys saw, some of the belt got behind the crank pulley, which got me a little nervous there. But once we actually removed the crank pulley and further diagnosed that there was actually no belts that passed the crank seal, I was super happy to see that. We're leaving some parts over here, guys, that, uh, like, for example, there, the horns are still good on there. There's a lot of screws that we need to take off of these parts. 
These parts are complete garbage, so I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, but now this side is officially ready to go. So we got everything pulled off of this side. Um, so now we can actually pretty much look at it. You guys can see right here is where the bend is. Um, I definitely think they can actually pull this out, cut it if needed, um, or actually repair this. I don't even think this needs to be replaced. Now, as far as this section goes right over here, this is pretty much done for. Um, so I think what we're gonna have to do is buy another one of these, chop it somewhere right over here, um, and have them just re-weld this section um, and just straighten this thing out. And I think it's gonna look absolutely perfect. Um, this is the passenger side. So super happy now the passenger side came out. We're still working on the driver's side. Uh, we, end, we did end up getting uh, the belt out of the crank plate right over here. Uh, so the belt is officially gone. We removed everything. We actually removed this belt as well. Um, so it's looking really good. This pulley right over here is damaged, unfortunately. Not a big deal. We'll probably end up swapping all the pulleys out with a new pulley kit. Um, and then this right here uh, is unfortunately damaged. Um, we could probably reuse it, but for the sake of the rebuild, probably just get a new one just for peace of mind. You can even see right here, this is dented too. I don't, I don't want this thing wobbling and sending the belt right into the cranks. That would suck. Um, so anyways, we got a lot of things off. We got everything off on this side. We're just gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing on this side, remove everything on this side. Um, so we can, again, further diagnose um, and just get everything else out of the way, fully, you know, ready. Um, so when we actually get an oil cooler in here, we can give it a startup. That sounds exciting. great. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we need a pyro fuse too. So let's not forget about a pyro fuse. We need a pyro fuse to put on the batteries and give this thing a proper startup. But uh, yep, should be pretty good. We're gonna be starting up hopefully soon. And guys, after about a couple of hours of working on the M4 CS, uh, good news and bad news. Good news, subframe in the front is not destroyed, which means that pretty much the engine is most likely good unless it was started. I'm thinking the pyro fuse has still not been touched, so I do believe that this engine still could be good, which would be absolutely amazing. Um, the only unfortunate thing is I just realized down here, if I go ahead and just put a flashlight, Look how bad and buckled this uh, frame rail is. So unfortunately, um, either I get to strip everything off of this side, I already removed the AC compressor. If I actually remove this, maybe they can actually do the repairs without having to pull the engine out. But it's looking like we might have to pull this engine out um, if it's a good engine. I mean, regardless, if it's a good or bad engine, we might have to pull it out. But if it's a good engine, I might try to leave it in and get this thing repaired while the engine's inside the car. It'd just be a whole lot easier. It saves us a bunch of time and uh, the car will be movable at the same time. The power steering rack does look great which is a good sign. We did end up removing this wheel. This wheel is bent. You guys can see down there as well. The tie rod is also shot off. So uh, it does need a new tie rod on this side. Suspension honestly looks good. Like I said, tire even looks good. So it just needs a rim on the driver's side, which is pretty awesome. So honestly, after pulling everything off, did you think this is good or bad news? I mean, great news, right? Like we thought, I thought there was gonna be like a hole in the block, my worst <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, so honestly guys, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty happy about how things are looking so far. Um, looking on the car as well, I actually just remembered that in the auction photos, uh, when it actually ended at the, uh, the Copart auction um, with the insurance company, the current airbags were both deployed. Currently, I don't know if you guys can see that, the current airbags are not deployed and the headliner is back in. He could have just tucked in the current airbags um, and just put up the headliner, or he could have actually replaced the current airbag, which would be pretty awesome, not gonna lie. I actually just noticed your knee airbags are deployed as well, but not a big deal. Those are pretty cheap. In the trunk as well, they did throw in a couple goodies. Uh, when I mean goodies, I mean like this grow will probably resell because it's not up to our standards. There's a few little cracks, but I know a lot of people that rebuild them, they don't mind stuff like that. So that's probably still resellable. There's still a few modules on this headlight that's completely shattered um, and the rest of the stuff is honestly just junk. So hopefully in the next video of the CS guys, we're gonna try to order the new pyro fuse. We're gonna try to order the oil cooler and the oil lines and try to get this bad boy started. Do an oil change and if this thing starts, that would be pretty awesome because bro if it starts we're gonna go full send dude oh my god it's gonna be M4 CS on the road. It's, I, it's my dream car. It's my dream car. It's his dream. Actually, it was super funny. He literally told me, he's like, Nor, if you ever find a white M4, let me know. I want a white M4. Yeah, I said white M4. Just a white M4. I was like, yeah, I think we need an M4 CS for cheaper than a white M4. That's how, like, $15,000 for a 2020 M4 is insane, not to mention a CS. So, again, fingers crossed, guys, we won. But currently, we don't really know yet. I guess we'll find out in the next video. So make sure to smash the like button if you guys want us to update you guys with a new video ASAP. We're gonna go ahead and place the order on those parts tonight. And uh, hopefully when they come in, we'll show you guys the update. I'll see you guys in the next one. Love y'all so much. Peace out.
I tried guessing. I don't even remember what I guessed now. So you're gonna slight. I can slightly see it kind of out of the cover. You're gonna probably guess what it is, but I guarantee you're wrong. It, you have to see how this is. <laughs> go, let's go ahead. Walk towards the car. Oh so we God. have a seven series of parting out, guys. As you know, it's right there, just getting taken apart. So as Jonathan's walking closer mm -hmm. to the car reveal, all right, from right here, what I think is it? It's a, it's a G82. No, no. A G82. G87. 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 Do you think we're balling? Dude, that's what it looks like. Ah, uh, no, bro. We can't afford a $50,000 <laughs> rebuild right I now. I don't know. It looks like a G. <laughs> come a little closer. Come a little closer. I can't tell. A little bit. A little. Okay, hold on, hold on. I maybe. How hold the camera for me real quick. <laughs> so the back looks like a G87. There's so many parts, guys, by the way, because of uh, basically oh my this goodness. 7 Series, dude. Like, I've never had parts literally laid out like this. It's crazy. <laughs> it's just 7 Series takes way too much space. I honestly can't tell from here. Oh, I thought it was a G87 because of the back kind of looks like one. You know, everyone's guessing. It's a muscle car because the hood ends like this. Is it not a BMW? See, you almost fell for that too, right? Because it looks like a muscle car from the front of the hood, right? But it, don't worry, don't worry. It is, it is a uh, what is BMW. This? So I'm gonna go ahead and peel it up a little bit. What does that look like? It looks like an M4. An M4, right? Yeah. I still don't know what it is, I'm gonna be honest. Is it an M4? It is. What kind of M4? I don't know. I can't, bro. I genuinely cannot tell, bro. I can't, I can't tell. It looks like an M4. It looks like an M4. Well, I mean, it's clapped, so. What is it like an like a CS? Say CS. Oh. Nope. I, I still can't tell, bro. <laughs> CS. Ah, there we go. <laughs> bro, is it's hard this, to tell. I couldn't tell. Isn't it That's crazy sick, though? though? What the heck? Look at the seeds, dude. Bro. Look at the trim. The trim. Oh, bro, the trim. I love these seats. Alcantara yeah, in the these, inner. Oh, I've never seen that. Dude, is that OEM? That's OEM. Also, look at the door card. Oh, what the freak? These used to be, bro, these are a heck of expensive. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it makes you feel like the GT3, <laughs> oh. you know, Porsche style. Yeah. Dude, bro, crazy. so we saw this at auction here in Sacramento. Check out these taillights, too. Remember we used to want these on our uh, F30s and uh, 335s? Dude, yes. The original OLEDs, bro. Bro, I remember seeing these on an M4, like, four years ago and being like in shock. Oh. We went to Beaver Fest in 2019 and one of the shops we went to had an M4 CS and I was like, dang, that's-, that's These are crazy. gorgeous guys. And these are not what you guys think. Each one of these are $800, every piece, $800. Well, they bro. used to be like 8K or something Oh yeah, like 8K that. for the set. Now they're about like 3,500 to 4K for the set, but crazy still kind of crazy. <laughs> not expecting that, huh? <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. CS, baby. 